The main job of a wingman is to score goals. For this reason, I have worked hard at improving my shot. I believe the most important single factor that distinguishes the outstanding hockey player from the average one is the ability to control a stick properly. Consequently, it's the reason why so many strong arm pros have such weak shots, why some players are so slow at getting off their attempts on goal, and why others have difficulty with their passing. It's also the reason why some players of small stature have been so successful in the game. Starting with the top hand, a man who controls the puck will always have a very firm grip with this hand. You will note on the pamphlet accompanying this record that my thumb is pressed against the back of the stick rather than being on top or held loosely along the back of the shaft. With a thumb in this position, you can hold a stick in the fingers of your hand, and as this hand controls the stick whether you are shooting, passing, or stick handling, you should always be able to maintain a very firm grip. You will also note that the blade of the stick is cupped, so you should be able to take the hardest pass without any difficulty, as this has a trapping effect on the puck. The bottom hand is what puts the power into the shot, so you must hold the stick as much as possible in the fingers. An example of why I believe in this is if you wanted to throw a baseball and you held it in the palm of your hand, it would be very difficult to control. If it's held in your fingers, you can throw it in any direction accurately. I cannot overemphasize the importance of the proper grip. I feel this can make up for any lack of size or skating ability you may have. The wrist shot is the one used most often. Therefore, you must be able to get it away quickly and accurately. I make my hands go in opposite directions as quickly as possible, and at the same time, try to spin the puck from the heel of the blade to the toe. The spin makes it more difficult for the goaltender to stop when shooting, and it gives me practice at putting the spin on the puck for passing. I think the puck can be passed more accurately if it has this spin on it. You will note in the pamphlet how my lower hand has rolled over the shaft so that it's pointing at the net on the follow through. If your hand ends up in this position, you should be able to develop a hard shot. To develop a good wrist shot, you should make the stick help you as much as possible by putting a lot of pressure on the shaft. In this way, you will be able to stand almost completely still and get a powerful shot away. You should not try just to sweep the puck off the ice as you will only have a high weak shot. The proper length and lie of the stick is very important. The length of the stick should come up to your chin with your skates on. If you are using the correct lie, the bottom of your stick will be worn completely across. The slap shot plays a big part in my game. And the way hockey is played today, it is a real benefit for all those who can use it properly. Here again, I think the grip is the most important factor, as strength alone does not mean you will have a powerful shot. The hands on the slap shot are held the same with the lower hand going down the shaft approximately six inches. I keep my top hand almost stationary, unlike the wrist shot where my hands work in opposite directions. The bottom hand does all the work and generates all the power. I try to lift the stick as upright as possible with my head and shoulders remaining over the top of the puck. When I bring the stick down, my arm is perfectly straight and wrist rigid. I hit the ice one inch behind the puck and try to get as much whip from the stick shaft as possible. A good follow through is very important on a slap shot, as this shot is telegraphed and you have to drop your head, and in so doing, an opposing player will have a good chance to give you a solid check, but with the proper follow through, your hands and stick will give you good protection. My best slap shot will invariably be pulled five or six inches towards my body, so I always aim a foot or so inside the post if I'm going for the far side of the net. If I get a weak shot away, the goalie will usually stop it but if I catch a hold of a good one, I should have a good chance to score. When going in on the goaltender, you should carry the puck out in front of your body, in a position that does not require an extra move to get a shot away, and at the same time, try to keep the puck lined up with the center of the net, so you can shoot for any of the four corners. If possible, I try to shoot for the corner away from the goalie's catching hand, as he will have difficulty protecting this area with only his leg and goal stick to help him. By carrying the puck in front of your body, you will be able to control it better should the goaltender move out of his net and cut down your angle to shoot at. If this happens, you should try to fake him out of the net with a quick move to either side. And once you have committed yourself, you should shoot the puck with all the power possible at the net. Many times you see fellows make good plays, only to relax when they have the goaltender beaten and he comes up with a good effort and stops the shot. You should always put the puck in the net as though it's the difference between winning and losing. When you are skating, you should always have both hands on the stick. 
with the stick carried as close to the ice as possible. There are many reasons for this, but the main ones are that your teammates will be able to pass you the puck much more accurately, as they will have a target to shoot at. And also, if one of the opposition misses the puck, you are in a position to take immediate control, especially around their net. When you are playing the wing, you must learn to stay on your own side of the ice. If you get in the habit of roaming, you make it very difficult for your teammates to play their positions properly. You should try to get yourself in good position, so that when you get the puck, you are in full stride and have some open ice to move into. I like to receive the puck at the red line, so that you do not have to check your stride for fear of going offside. Remember, if you go offside, you are working for the opposition. Talking to your line mates while on the ice is very beneficial, as it indicates where they are and whether they are open. While playing on the offense, you should always position yourself so you get a good shot on goal. The three forwards should never be cut behind the opposing team's net. One fellow, mainly a winger, should be 25 or 30 feet in front of the net, so that he's in a position to receive the puck and get a shot on goal. If the opposition gets control, he will become the back checker. When back checking, you should pick up one man, keeping him between yourself and the boards, so that he cannot get a clear break for the net. Do not chase the puck. Stay with the one man till your team gets possession. On the defense. If the opposition gets in your end, the two wings should take the opposing team's defenseman. Stay between him and the net, making him shoot, but don't let him shift around you and walk in on goal. Play the man and not the puck. And now let's talk about the power play. When you have this advantage, you must try to control the puck as much as possible and set up some good scoring plays. First of all, when you start to play from your own end, you should all come up the ice as a unit, with the head man carrying the puck. You should be in full stride as the puck is carried or shot in over their blue line. Once in their zone, you should try to get it to the man who has the best scoring opportunity. On the point, I try to keep all the players in sight, so that when I get the puck, I know whether to pass or shoot. I must not hit the player coming out to check me, as he will likely have a breakaway. I try to keep the shot low, so that my forwards can deflect it at the net, and it's difficult for the opposing team's defenseman to stop. The better physical condition you are in, the easier the game is to play. I do a few extra exercises I feel will benefit my play. I do 20 fingertip push-ups each day to keep my arms in top condition. After practice, I carry the puck around the rink while looking over the boards three or four feet. This gives me confidence while handling the puck as well as practice at keeping my head up. Remember, practice makes perfect.